Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned into our YouTube channel for our weekly video analysis. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So first and foremost, I'd like to take this chance to wish everybody a happy, healthy, and prosperous 2022. Today, we're going to start off with SPY because it's holding its breakout. Also look at SOX. And then want to go over signal and setup expectation because it's important that we set some realistic expectations for how many setups and signals we can expect in a given year. Look at energy ETFs. They are surging, XOP in particular, and software is underperforming. So we got this bifurcation going on in the market. So let's start off with SBY, which is one of the strongest ETFs out there. And that's for the simple reason that you can see it is trading near a 52-week high. If we look on this chart here, the overall trend is clearly up. In this first window, we have the Stoke Close Indicator. And that's what I use to define the trend for my ETFs. And that is part of the Trend Investor Pro Indicator Edge plugin. If you go down here to the bottom, I'm on Stock Charts ACP. And if you click on Plugins, you can see all the available plugins. And there is the Trend Investor Pro Indicator Edge. And so for over on the left, I'm going to open up the chart settings. And we can see there is the Trend, the Stoke Close Indicator. 125 days covers six months. Smooth it with a five-period moving average. And then when you get above 60, that's a bullish signal because clearly you're in the upper half of the range when you're above 60. And when you go below 40, you're clearly in the lower half of the range. And so we go back here, we can see we've been bullish since the end of May of 2020. So this is a long extended uptrend for SPY. And so what do we do? Well, when we're in an uptrend, then we look for oversold conditions. And when we get oversold conditions, that means we've had a pullback within that trend. And so on the lower window, I've got the momentum composite indicator. And what that does is it aggregates momentum signals in five different oscillators. And so when three or more are oversold, you get minus three. Here you can see all five were oversold in September there. And I'll put on the crosshair so you can line that up. So we get oversold. And if you look back, you can see we only had four oversold readings the entire year. We had one here in March. We had one here in May. Then we had one in September. And then one at the end of the year in November. So not a lot of opportunities because this is a very strong uptrend. And I'm going to show the semiconductors next because they're strong too. But the point is, it depends on what your trading time frame is. But I'm looking for basically uptrends first, and then I'm looking for a setup within that uptrend. And so part of that setup is becoming oversold like we were here in March, according to my oversold calculations. And then you can see we have a bit of a flag kind of pullback working, and there we get a breakout. And we get a little throwback after the breakout, but no you know, oversold signal. But there's a clear breakout signal there, and we continue higher. And then we get oversold here in May. And so once we become oversold, I look for a little pattern and look for some sort of a breakout or short-term bullish catalyst. And sometimes I use Stoke Close, and that's on my website, trendinvestorpro.com. But there we can see a breakout. And then we're oversold in September. So we get oversold, and we get this you know, gap down and this bounce, but we don't get any kind of a breakout. And so we need to extend the, these lines. So we get the wedge and we get a gap and a little pullback and another gap surge in October. So that was a pretty good breakout. And so then we go to November and we get oversold here. And this evolves into a basically like a big triangle consolidation here. You can see we're just moving sideways. And this is normal because you need to digest big gains. We had a big gain from... 425 to 475, 480, pull back and consolidate. And now we got a breakout and we're holding above the breakout there. 
So if you're real short term, you could draw a little flag here, but that's too short term for me. It's important that you know your time frame. So right now we're in what I would call in trend. We're in the middle of a trend. We're in an uptrend. We have a catalyst off support here. We have a breakout here to work with. So we don't have a setup or a signal on this chart. But if you look back over the last 12 months, we've only, we only had four opportunities to partake in this uptrend as far as these pullbacks were concerned. And so that's about one every three months. And as far as my trading style is concerned, you know, on the charts, one signal every three to four months is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a signal every day, every week. I'm looking for better, not better, but deeper pullbacks or longer consolidations. That's just my trading style. It's very important that we know our trading style so we don't look for something that doesn't fit our trading style. Now, semiconductor is one of the best performing groups in 2021 and staying strong here in 2022. And if we look at this chart here, you can see Stoke Close was bullish the entire year. And we had an oversold condition in March. We had one in May. We had one in September, October. And we didn't have one at the end of December. So we only had three oversold conditions in SOX. And so if we try to get some patterns working here, uh, we had a bit of a triangle consolidation there and a breakout. Well, this one failed. All right. But then, you know, this became a pullback. And it was a pullback within an uptrend. And we got the breakout there in May after becoming oversold. So when you get oversold, that's a signal to look for a setup. Look for that bullish catalyst. And we got it there. And then we got another one here into October, September, October with the pullback. And then you can see the breakout. And that was a great signal. And now we don't really have a signal and I think we're just in trend. This is not my type of a setup. But basically what we have here is kind of a, a flat flag, if you will. We've had a big surge. We've got a consolidation. And we're going for a breakout here. And we're consolidating around the breakout. Now, if you wanted to, you could say that we have a surge and a really small flag. But again, this is too small of a pattern, too short term of a pattern for me. So I'm not going to look at it right now. And as far as the, you know, setup here, I don't see a setup in semiconductors. It's not my kind of setup. I'm looking for pullbacks where we become oversold and we have a tradable pattern and a little breakout and we have a good reward to risk ratio. Now we're seeing that in some of the energy related ETFs. So if we look at the oil and gas exploration and production ETF, we can see it hit a new high there in November and then started pulling back. And so it basically pulled back with like a channel or a wedge. And so you have this big move. You corrected, you retraced about 50% of that advance. So you can see you moved from, say, 71 to 111, and you came back to around 90. And so we became oversold here in November. And we got a little bounce, but then fell back down. So sometimes you get a little bit of a time between when you become oversold and when you get that breakout. If you look here in July and August, again, we had the same thing happening here. You know, these indicators aren't perfect. But here in July, we're oversold. And we get this little gap reversal, but it didn't last. And we fell back down to a lower low, became oversold again, and then we get the breakout there when we had the full pattern. So sometimes there can be a few weeks between that initial oversold signal, the pattern development, and the breakout. And that's what happened with XES. But XES has a nice breakout going here. And Energy is one of the leading groups here in 2022 over the last three days. So here is trendinvestorpro.com, and this is where I put out my analysis on ETFs. And every week we have a market regime page where we identify the broad market trend. We had some whipsaws in December, but we're back in bull mode for the market regime. And this is based on a composite breadth model back tested to 2003. 
We have an ETF trend and signal table where you can rank ETFs and also a free analysis page. And see what we were looking at this week. On Tuesday, I wrote about SPY and QQQ leading the plunge in bonds, and we had that breakout in the 10-year yield. And that's kind of changing things. And also, I pointed out the Zweig breath thrust in SPY. And there you can see the two breath thrusts in SPY in early December and late December on an individual day. So I use breath a lot when it comes to timing the longer term. And there's the breakout in QQQ that we're monitoring because it's kind of in the trend monitoring phase. But one thing about the 10-year Treasury yield is it looks like it's breaking out and moving higher. But you had this big advance here from 0.5% to 1.75%, and then this long consolidation. And you kind of had a breakdown here. So we had a swing and then a downswing, but now we've broken out to the upside. We've reversed this little downswing within the triangle. So I'm going for a triangle breakout. That's the call here. We get a breakout and we get a move towards 2% in the 10-year. And if that happens, that could be bullish for banks, which I also covered uh, in that commentary as well. So check out trendinvestorpro.com if you'd like to know more. Now, while I'm still in bull market mode and QQQ is in an uptrend and the stocks, uh, semiconductors are strong, there are some concerns out there because we are seeing pockets of weakness within the technology sector, the biggest sector in the S&P 500. And one thing is software here. So you had software hitting a new high and then boom, it fell really sharply and broke that October low. So that's kind of like a benchmark low that, that should have held but it ultimately broke that October low. And then you got a little bounce into mid-December and a pullback, and then a bounce in late December, but you didn't exceed that mid-December high. That's a benchmark high. So you had relative weakness, absolute weakness on the downside, and then you had a relatively weak bounce here in December, and you're already down below those December lows here in January. And if you look at Stoke Close, it turned bearish there in the early part of December with that decline. So we're on a downtrend signal here. Sometimes you get whipsaws. I mean, we got some whipsaws in March, and then it flipped back to bullish there, whipsaw in May, and flipped back to bullish in June to catch a good move. Trend following indicators whipsaw. That's just part and parcel of the game there. You're going to get more losers than winners, but the idea is that those 40% of trades that make money are going to pay for those 60% of trades that lose money. But I'm a bit concerned because we're seeing this in cloud computing, the First Trust Internet ETF, where a lot of relative weakness, especially you had this big decline into early December, and you didn't really bounce with the rest of the market in December, and already moving lower here in January. So tech is putting out a, it's a headwind for the broader market, I think. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link in the description below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next week. Have a great day.